Uh, Chris, welcome to you. What did you make of, of that stunning graphic, terrifying graphic? Where's it coming from? Well, it doesn't terrify me because I haven't seen the, the weapon working yet and nobody else has. It's, uh, I'm afraid, something that is a fantasy weapon, very much like the ones that Hitler was threatening us with at the end of the Second World War. Um, I'm afraid this is the, the rage of an impotent bully that isn't getting its way. Uh, Russia desperately wants to be liked by civilised nations like the United Kingdom. It's not getting the respect it wants. And so it's thrashing around, threatening us with all sorts of things that it knows it will never be able to or be willing to implement because if it does, it will get a boatload of Trident back the other way and most of its major cities will disappear in a radioactive cloud as well. Does it have an effect, this, this implausible but persistent uh, scaremongering and this idea they seem to be particularly targeting the UK? I mean, you know, Chris, when you talk to people outside of the story, you know, people who are not following it, every, every, every twist of it, are you are you hearing more people saying, well, we may be sleepwalking into a nuclear conflict? Uh, it could be a, the, the Cold War turning hot. Are you hearing that from from ordinary folk? Well, I think people um, are uh, the Russians are, are trying to make everybody feel anxious uh, about things they don't know about. But, uh, you know, take it from me. Uh, there's no way that the Russian mafia oligarchies uh, at the top of this organization are going to risk annihilation on, uh, on their own side for the sake of a regional conflict. This is huffing and puffing. It's what big bad wolves do in the world when they don't get their way. Uh, it, they simply cannot risk the sort of retaliation that they will get back if they use any sort of nuclear device. And of course, what they're forgetting, of course, is that radioactive tsunami uh, has got more than, more than enough energy to make its way across Europe into Russia as well. Uh, I mean, this, this is just brainless thinking. What do you say, as a former military man, uh, Chris Perry, to those politicians, I'm thinking of, of the Greens in particular, uh, to, some, to some degree the SNP have had some interesting things to say about NATO membership as well. What do you say to those politicians who feel that nuclear weapons have, have no role to play in deterring the advances of an aggressor like Vladimir Putin? It seems to me, it will seem to a lot of people, that right now we've been reminded in the cruelest way, whether he's crazy or not, he's got nuclear weapons. And actually, it's at times like this you want to have them too, not because you ever intend to use them, but because it does stop a bully in his tracks. Yeah, of course it does. It's kept the peace for the past uh, 75 years. It's, um, it's probably the best insurance policy this country can invest in. In fact, I'll tell you, Colin, that per capita, it's less than the price of house insurance. And that's keeping us safe from uh, the bully's threats and also the threat of uh, nuclear annihilation. When I hear the SNP and the Greens speak, you know, I want to say to them, look, you're being strategically illiterate, frankly, and a strategy of wishful thinking is not suitable uh, to represent your constituents in the modern world. There are evil regimes out there. They wish us harm. And I'm afraid to say becoming a nuclear free zone or leaving NATO, uh, neither of those are adequate solutions to that sort of and scale of problem.